um, to talk about the progress is on. for um, Team Open. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about um, what we've done over the last three days and where we're hoping to go. And so I'm just going to let the different teams that we had as part of this project um, talk about what they've done. Um, we're going to start with the data processing team, and then we'll talk a little bit about the machine learning aspect of this project and finish up with some visualizations. All right. Hi, so the data processing team members were Axel Hoddock, Yvonne Jimenez, Jaya Kumar, and Kim Wellman. Together, we cleaned up a data set, we mapped transcriptomic and genomic coordinates, and we also calculated some RNA structure information. It's my turn. So, um, um, this is the machine learning team, and uh, I'm Sean, and we also have Tony uh, and Alex. Uh, should I just go ahead for my results now? Go for it. Uh, maybe give us a description of the three types of algorithms you guys did too. Can you share my screen? So we took the process data from the data processing team. So um, we have in, in our model, we incorporate the sequence information of the uh, anti-sensing oligonucleotide and also the gene information to the training. Uh, the gene information is like uh, which gene is it targeted to. And um, first, uh, the, we actually we trained uh, three kinds of model. The first is uh, using um, random forest. And um, one of the interesting output of uh, random forest is that um, they can output the frequency of each feature being um, used as a splitting criteria. And in this plot, this is uh, those fre this normalized frequency um, plot together. And this is the uh, top um, 50 um, features. And uh, this frequency, um, this frequency information can stand for feature importance. And uh, we can see the top feature is called CC. And uh, this CC feature means that the CC pattern appears in uh, in this in this um, oligonucleotide uh, sequence. And also for some of other sequence like CCT um, or uh, or like GC, they are all like uh, two con like this consecutive pattern appear in the in the gene. And uh, this is interesting thing because uh, CC, like CC, GC, and AA appear a lot, and uh, they are a very important uh, feature. I think it's because um, in the target in the targeting RNA, um, GC um, often appears in a very secondary structure because they have three hydrogen bonds rather than um, A and T. So that's why CC. A is kind of a uh, extreme oligonucleotide um, pattern or uh, appear as a very important feature. Also, uh, CC, like, uh, the second uh, feature like CCD4, and uh, along with other long name here appear, they are um, the gene name. And I think it's also important because um, they, um, it, they uh, for, for different kind of targeting gene, for sure we have to use different um, kind of pattern to target them. And another interesting um, feature is called position feature. So uh, for example, uh, this feature name is called if position 18 is C, and also uh, here are others uh, like if position one and position 19 is something. And from this, we found that the beginning or ending of the oligonucleotide, of the anti-sensing oligonucleotide may be more important. And um, this is still uh, very interesting because we don't know why, how to interpret that. And uh, we act actually, we also double check this kind of um, import, this kind of uh, positional importance by um, convolutional neural network. This is done by um, by Tony. Um, it's over here. So he used a um, convolutional neural network to um, produce a 
to produce the to try to um, produce the um, effectiveness prediction. And uh, from neural network from the CNN neural network um, can also generate a uh, gradient map, and which can also stands for of each location. So this is the length of the gene. Sorry, a length of of anti-sensing oligonucleotide, and uh, the more yellow means that they are more important. This is still a preliminary result, but uh, this is a uh, uh, but this is an averaged um, averaged importance map after averaging all of the gene. Um, we can see that at the end, the end hospital, and immediately there's also hospital, but we didn't see at the at the beginning. So there are some this is some this is some um, result we generated, but we don't know how to interpret that. For sure, uh, provide some. To, to interpret. That's also, really awesome. Yeah, we're running out of time though, so um, finish this up with the machine learning part. Yeah, so this is a, the last thing we generated. So this is the um, y x axis is the um, training, sorry, the x axis is the real data of the effectiveness of ASO. Y is the, um, y is the uh, um, effectiveness. And we can see there's a positive trend. So our algorithm can really predict the real world data. Yeah, that's it. All right, Hi. thank you. This is, I'm sorry, can you guys hear me? Hi, this is Owen from the data visualization team. Our team members are Sophia, Helena, and Kelly, and we're, respons we're responsible for creating a web interface to visualize data passed down by the data processing team. So uh, first, we merge all the data and into a big meta table consists of the ASO sequence, the effective score, the target gene and the coordinates, and the RNA secondary structure score. So here is the interface. So here I can... Uh, low my table. Mock. Sorry. I can low my mock table here, and then it'll show the the ASO mean effective score, the mean ASO effective score for all the genes, and then I'll pass down to Helena to explain the interactive genomic plot. And um, so for the interactive and um, genomic plot, so basically what it is, is like a graph showing um, for like all the assets of one gene where it aligns in the coordinates. And it's really nice because if you hover with the mouse over one, you can get the information of each one of them. And in this case, we only have the gene name and sequence uh, uh, and the score, but this can be change when we get more data and everything to what is more informative for us. Okay, and um, for the RNA structure score plot, it's um, for the ASO sequences that have been selected after the filter, this plot is showing the RNA secondary structure score for each base of each ASO sequence. So you can see how that varies between the different bases of like each sequence. 